Hi, we're so glad that you can join us here at Living Life. I pray that as we're studying the book of Matthew, that it would help you to see the teachings of Christ in a new way, in a fresh start, uh, as He wants to give to us. And as you look in today's passage, uh, it reminds me of when uh, I was in junior high, and uh, when we had gym class, uh, we all had to wear the same clothes. And so uh, we all had to change into our gym uniform and then do our uh, physical education uh, together as a class. And then we would go back and put our clothes into our locker and then go, uh, go about to our next class. Uh, but on every Friday, uh, we would take our gym clothes home to get washed. And so uh, what we used to do is we would roll up our gym clothes into this big ball. And uh, after we had done, we're finished with class and we're waiting for the bell to ring, we would start taking uh, this ball of clothes and start throwing it at each other. And so as everyone is getting hit with these balls and then finally when the bell would ring, we would have to find our ball of clothes and so we can take it back with us. And because everyone had the same clothes, it was difficult to figure out uh, which one belonged to who. And so the only way we could figure it out was by opening it and seeing whose name was written on the clothes. Uh, because on the front was a blank space where we would write our names. And so that's how uh, we would know who it would belong to. to. And in this passage that we're looking at today, uh, we see the famous answer uh, that Jesus gives to those who are trying to trap him by telling them to give what belongs to Caesar and what belongs to God. Matthew chapter 22 verses 15 through 22. Then the Pharisees went out and laid plans to trap him in his words. They sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians. Teacher, they said, we know you are a man of integrity and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. You aren't swayed by men because you pay no attention to who they are. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus, knowing their evil intent, said, You hypocrites, why are you trying to trap me? Show me the coin used for paying the tax. They brought him a denarius, and he asked them, Whose portrait is this, and whose inscription? Caesar's, they replied. Then he said to them, Give to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, so they left him and went away. And so in this passage that we are studying here today, it shows and reveals our obligation to the government. And so Jesus never ceases to amaze me how he can answer and silence his critics at any point in time. I mean, we know that he's God, but he, when he does so, it gives such satisfaction in how uh, he answers uh, these people who are trying to disprove him. And so we see in this gospel, uh, Jesus gives a famous answer to render to Caesar's the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. And in those days, taxes were a big deal. And so it was a, a huge political issue and it still is today in today's society. And so I remember when I started working at my very first job and receiving, I remember getting that paycheck and I was hoping to expect uh, to get a lot of money. And as soon as I opened up the envelope and I saw that there were all this money that was going out to taxes given to the government. And I remember feeling so upset, but I knew that this was my duty um, as a citizen of this country. And so the Pharisees were trying to set a trap for Jesus to try to get him to say something uh, that would make him look foolish in the eyes of his audience, uh, that would disprove him as the Son of God. And so they thought they had him cornered. They thought that whatever answer he would give would put him in a very difficult situation. 
that if Jesus said that they, it, was, it was right to pay taxes to Caesar, uh, that would make him uh, on the same side as Romans. And so uh, the Jews at that time were opposed to Caesar, and most of the listeners were against these taxes that they had to pay. Now, but if Jesus told them not to pay taxes, then he would run the risk of being put in jail uh, for not obeying the government. And they would say, how can you promote such teachings that is against what God has ordained in this government? And so the Pharisees were looking for a way to trick Jesus with this question. And so in the answer that Jesus gives, uh, the word render means to give back. And so on the currency coin, Jesus says that since uh, the face of Caesar appears on that coin, we need to give back to him uh, what is his or what he deserves. It appears that Jesus acknowledges um, that we do have an obligation to the government. Um, by paying taxes, uh, we are paying the salary of government of workers and we support common resources and uh, we help to maintain good roads and transportation. Yeah, even the government uh, and politicians have a role to play, uh, which is ordained by God. Uh, but another thing that we see in this passage is our obligation to God. Now it appears that Jesus is showing that there are two separate worlds, uh, one belonging to the secular world and the other one belonging to God. Uh, we have the spiritual world and the secular world. But um, we know that the secular world is also under the control of God. So then what belongs to God? Whatever has God's image belongs to God. And so as children of God, um, we bear the image of the Creator in our lives. Therefore, we belong to Him. And so we are to give to God our lives, not just a part of it, but he's asking for our entire life. An area that I didn't realize I had a hard time giving up to God uh, was my family. And so I used to think that this was uh, my area. This was something that could not be uh, touched by other people. And so God reminded me that even my family uh, belongs to God and that I don't have ownership over them. And so this was a huge wake-up call for me to suddenly realize that I was holding on to my family too tightly. And so there is nothing that we have that doesn't belong to Him. Uh, we can't say that 90% is ours and then 10% is His. Uh, but we have to say that everything that we have belongs to Him. We are just managers and stewards of this gift that God has given to us. You know, as my kids um, are getting older, uh, I've been, we've been giving them allowance. And so uh, we give them some, some money so that they can spend on snacks when they go to school. And so sometimes when they come home from school, they have this snack that isn't finished yet. And so they're still eating it. And so I'll joke around with them and say, oh, can I have a bite of your snack? And so immediately um, my kids will get so defensive. They'll be like, no, this is mine. And then I would have to sit down and remind them that it's my money that I give into them and it's my money that they use to purchase this snack. And so therefore, it belongs to me. And so uh, they, understanding now what I've told them, they're willing to give, it, give their snack to me. Maybe not all of it, but some of it. But in the same way, we need to understand that uh, whatever we have all belongs to God. And so may we understand that and see that it's not something that we own, but it's everything that God owns is from us. And so as we take a look at our lives, uh, we realize that we have, we're given so much. We're given gifts that um, God has given. Uh, may we not think that these are things that we own, uh, but let's learn to uh, let go of it. And if God wants it, that we will be willing to give. So let's learn to sacrifice um, as an act of worship. 
So can we pray for that, that attitude and that approach to our God? Let's pray. Uh, Father, we thank you for every good and perfect gift that you've given to us. Uh, Thank you that we are your children and that as our good Father that you've bestowed these gifts. And so God, may we not hold too tightly uh, to the things that we have, to our possessions, uh, but may we learn that, God, that all things belong to you. And so we just gladly surrender and we realize uh, that you are indeed in control. And so we love you and we offer our lives to you. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.